One Man's Family. Now brought to you transcribed every weekday night at this time by Tabson, the new improved antihistaminic tablet for the symptoms of cold and hay fever. Another fine, dependable product of Miles Laboratories, makers of Alka-Seltzer. between Henry Barber and his son, Paul, in the library. Paul, did the fireman find any trace of a time bomb? No trace of anything, Dad, and there never will be. Have you looked across at Frome's this morning? The house is gone. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's how it is with the Barbers today. It's Tabson, spelled T-A-B-C-I-N, for fast relief from the symptoms of hay fever and summer cold. And friends, you can try Tabson for just 10 cents. That's what I said. If you'll send 10 cents to Miles Laboratories, Box 30, Elkhart, Indiana, we'll send you a regular 45-cent trial package of Tabson from our regular stock. Here is an improved antihistaminic tablet for relief from hay fever and summer cold. Tab that can give fast relief from the sniffles, the sneezes, the discomfort in the eyes and nose. But it does even more than this. Tabson also provides an effective pain reliever for the headache that so often accompanies summer colds and hay fever. This is the last time we can make this offer, friends. But if you get your dime in the mail right away, you'll get your liberal trial package of Tabson. Here's the address again. For a regular 45-cent trial package of Tabson, T-A-B-C-I-N, send 10 cents and your name and address to Miles Laboratories, Box 30, Elkhart, Indiana. Chapter 25, Book 76. The Book of Rexford Frome. Henry Barber's morning paper is usually folded beside his plate at the breakfast table. But this morning, unhappily, there was a slip-up. The paper didn't come. It is 9.30 now. We find Henry in the library phoning the news delivery service for the second time. If you say you've sent my paper, I'll take your word for it, but it still isn't here, sir. I'm on the telephone, family. Hello, you there? I've subscribed to the Chronicle for over 30 years. Why do you miss this street on the only days I particularly... I say we had a tragic fire in the neighborhood and I want to read about it. Henry. Just a moment, Henry. Very well, then. Send me another one and see that it gets here this time. I... Henry, hang up. He's brought her paper over for you. Hello. Morning, Father. Hello. Hello. Uh, my daughter's just... Hello. Yeah. Hung up on me. Yes, the newspaper boy poking around in the fire, probably. He missed the whole street. Goodness, such a turmoil, as if we didn't have enough to worry about. Here's the paper, Father. Yes, yes, thank you very much. The story's right there on the first page. Yes. How far, Mother? He left without eating his breakfast. We've all been simply frantic. I think he went back to the fire station or somewhere. Didn't say. Yes, where is this story? Oh, yes, yes, I've got it. Sea Cliff Mansion destroyed by flash fire. Yeah, listen to this, Nancy. Uh, sit down, sit down, both of you. Uh, the tragic possibility that Christine Abbott, celebrated concert pianist, and her wealthy brother, Rexford Frome, were trapped in a flash fire which engulfed their home in Seacliff, was being investigated by police and firemen through the early hours of the morning. A blaze of mysterious origin... <laughs> Yeah, they'll find that Frome said it himself before they're through. Go on, Henry. Yes, yes, uh, mysterious origin. Uh, Spread so rapidly that firemen were unable to enter the premises. Uh, Endangered nearby houses. Uh, Efficient work by three fire companies confined the blaze to the Frome mansion, which was destroyed. It is known that the pianist and her brother were planning soon to return to Europe, where she recently concluded a successful concert season. But whether or not they were in the house at the time of the fire has not been determined. Paul tried to check the airplane ticket offices last night, but... Finally, it mentions Emily Stewart. Well, read it. Yes. Uh, A neighbor, Mrs. Emily Stewart, whose home is directly across from the Frome estate, declared that she had seen no activity about the Frome household for several days. Well, if she didn't see them, then they weren't there because you can't go upstairs to shave in your own house, but what Emily... Read the rest, Father. Just notice what it says next. Yes. Oh, friendly. Uh, Sharon Ann's name is mentioned. Yeah, and Jack's name. Henry, let me see. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm going to read it. But seven year old seven. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Out loud, Henry. Yeah. Uh, but seven year old Sharon Ann Barber 
uh, daughter of Jack Barber, attorney of the well-known Seacliff family, you know, who lives nearby, insisted to firemen that she had seen Mr. Frome and his sister inside the house only a few minutes before the fire began. Oh, dear. Somebody should have explained to that reporter about Sharon's imagination. Yes, uh, let's see. Uh, no, that, that's all about Sharon. Oh, it says the investigation will be completed... Uh, this morning by the police and fire department. Uh, uh, that's all there is. If Sharon was fibbing about a matter as serious as this... Yes. Jack and Betty will have to do something about that. Yes, I've got it. I've got it. Hello? Oh, yes, Paul. Where are you? Oh. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh. Good. Wonderful news. What is it, Henry? Paul has just learned that Christine and her brother left on an airliner. They weren't in the fire. Oh, hey, thank goodness. Oh. Uh, Paul? What, New York by this time? Yes, yes, that's fine. Splendid. Uh, I'm glad that Christine is safe. Are you coming home now, Paul? There's some mail for you. Yeah, all right. See you in a little while. What do you say, Father? He drove down to the airline ticket office. He'll be home shortly. I'm going to bring him some coffee. Now that it's all over, I'm getting a splitting headache. Let me, Mother. No, I'd rather keep moving. There's coffee on the stove. I'll be right back. Father, then Mr. Frome couldn't have set that fire. How do you know? I wouldn't put anything past him. That kind of a wild-eyed agitator would have a time bomb. Just the sort of thing he'd think of, too. <laughs> well, those, those candles he always had burning. Yeah, you know... I'm hungry now. And we've got some good Danish pastries. Yes. I'll, I'll go tell your mother to... Oh, what's the matter, Father? Father, did you hurt yourself? Oh, no, no. Oh, just gave my knee a little turn. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Fanny, I was hoping you'd bring Danish pastries. Yes, I don't think I ate a bite at breakfast. Yes, I, I'm ravenous now. Hey, Mother, I'll take that tray. Thank you. Let me pour, Mother. Father just hurt his knee. Oh, no, no. Just move too soon. Oh, you know, Hazel, if it had cans, we'd all be in worse shape than we are now after this ordeal. He's a nice old man, and now you won't need him anymore. Well, I'm planning to keep him on, Hazel. But what'll he do? You won't let anybody help you in the garden. Yeah. Oh, I'd let Arnie help me a little. Henry. Yes, yes, he's a good, dependable man, Arnie. He had charge of all those flower beds at San Quentin when he was a trustee. Yeah, he knows a great deal about gardening things. Here's your coffee, Father. Thank you. Hello. And Paul. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, we didn't hear you come in. We're all so relieved, Paul. Uh, yes, Hazel. You're sure they left? Yes, there's no doubt about it, Mom. They were aboard a plane all during the fire. Did the firemen find any trace of a time, Mom? No, no trace of anything, Dad. And there never will be. Have you looked across at Frome's this morning? That house is gone. Here, I brought in an extra cup. Have some coffee, Paul. Oh, there's nothing I like better, Mom. Well, Hazel, you're over here bright early and helpful, huh? Hazel brought us her paper. The boy misses again this morning. Her father was carrying on until I saw... Yes, yes, yes. Here's your mail Oh, thanks, Dan. You know, you don't realize until something like this happens how valuable the police and fire departments really are. Uh, well, this is from Christine. Huh? Airmail from Chicago. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Probably too personal to read to us, hmm? well, I don't know. We'll see. Paul, you don't have to read it to us. Oh, let him go ahead if he wants to, Fanny. As a matter of fact, you seem to get a mention in here, Dan. Yes, yes, yes. You're going to read it? Dear Paul, I am writing this on the plain with the tall buildings of Kansas City dropping away beneath us. We will be in New York in a few hours and will leave for London tomorrow. You go too fast for me. I was so glad you went to the Sky Ranch after our last meeting. Goodbyes are always difficult for us. <clears throat> Oh, you don't need to read it. Oh, here's the mention of you, Dan. Uh, I will always remember your father's visit to me. He is the kindly, gracious person I always knew him to be, and our pleasant talk is one of the bright memories I will always cherish the secret. Yes, yes. Convey to him my deep thanks for his thoughtfulness. It took open-hearted generosity to come and see me after Rex's recent behavior. Rex seems calm today and has talked with animation about returning to father's birthplace in Austria. I do not know just where I will be after I get Rex settled, but Mr. Wigglesworth, Rex's attorney in Seacliff, will always know where I can be reached. 
I presume this letter will be forwarded to you at the Sky Ranch, and by then I will be in London, and, uh, well, that's about it. That's all, then. That's all he's going to read, Father. Very flattering what she said about you, Dad. Yeah, a charming woman. I'd write her a note myself someday. Yeah. Oh, oh, doorbell. No, no, no. Have your coffee, Paul. I'll get... Oh! Henry, why are you walking that way? Have you hurt your leg? No, no, no. Just gave it a little twist. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Two or three times lately, I thought he was limpy. Me too, Mother. And this business about letting Mr. Gans work in the garden. What? Yes. When he said that, I knew he wasn't feeling well. Watch him when he comes back. Hey, Mom, you better have Dr. Thompson take a look at him. You manage it. It's worth your life to try to get him to a doctor's office. Who was it, Henry? Oh, just the boy. I finally arrived with my morning paper at 9.45. That's all. Henry, Barbie, you are limping. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Hey, and hearty and happy with all the good news. Why, why I could dance a little jig. Oh, oh. Henry, my father. Uh, leave me alone, family. Uh, yes, I... I never felt better in my life. I'll sit here in the arm of the chair and have my daily space. Henry, are you in pain? Hazel, do you think we ought to send for Dr. Thompson? Why, uh, Henry. But Henry. Henry, I will not be a sacrificial guinea pig for that pill peddler Fred Thompson. Now, go ahead. Put your heads together. Contrive as you will, I will not be an interesting case history for a medical science. So, I refuse absolutely and positively. <laughs> back in a moment with further development. Friends, let me remind you once again to send for your trial package of Tabson, spelled T-A-B-C-I-N. You'll want to try this remarkable new product that can give fast relief from the symptoms of hay fever and summer colds. And this is the last time we can make this special offer, so listen. Here's all you do. Send 10 cents and your name and address to Miles Laboratories, Box 30, Elkhart, Indiana, and we'll send you a regular 45-cent trial package of Tabson from our regular stock. We know you like Tabson, and we do want you to get in on this special offer. Then for Tabson, T-A-B-C-I-N, Tabson today. All right, Paul. Dad's strange actions brought to mind what happened the other afternoon. I came into the library and heard Dad giving Dr. Thompson hail Columbia about something over the phone. He suddenly saw me and abruptly slammed up the receiver and limped out of the room. I yelled after him, you can't tell me you're not limping. He yelled back, I'll be the last man in the house to do any limping and don't you forget it. Well, that's how it is with the barbers today. Good night. hot weather make your feet itch and burn? Do you feel miserable with athlete's foot? Here's a remarkable new germicide and fungicide for you. It's Bactine, spelled B-A-C-T-I-N-E. Bactine is amazingly effective, yet it does not sting nor burn like harsher antiseptic. Use it to relieve the itching and combat the infection of athlete's foot. See how truly effective Bactine can be in relieving this common ailment. Bactine is a clear, colorless liquid, will not stain, has a fresh, clean odor. Ask your druggist for Bactine. B-A-C-T-I-N-E. 30 and 70 cents a bottle. One Man's Family is brought to you transcribed every weekday night at this time by Miles Laboratories, makers of Tabson. Monday, the beginning chapter of Book 77, The Book of Henry. This is a Carlton E. Morse production, directed by Michael Raffetto. One Man's Family comes to you from California. Stay tuned for Morgan Beatty and reports from the diplomatic and fighting front. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>